Hello everybody, Alex here with Mobius Venture and this video is going to be part four, dealing with applying for our visa for Spain. This will be the final video, dealing specifically with the visa application process because this is the last step. All we need to do is fill out the visa application, get all of our paperwork together and apply. So that's what we're going to be going over today. First, we're going to go through the visa application, how to fill it out, and then we're going to be making a list of everything we need to have before we actually go to apply to get the visa. So let's take a look. Okay, so here in front of us, I have the visa application requirements and guidelines for the Houston consulate. Now in my previous video at the beginning I walked you through how to get to the guidelines that are provided by each of the consulates so if you need to do that or if you don't know how to get to your guidelines then I would recommend pausing this video here go back to my previous video in another tab and just quickly watch the first five or so minutes. The other thing that I want to reiterate here that I emphasized in my last video is that you need to be following the guidelines specifically for your consulate. And I'm probably going to say that more times than you wanna hear in this video, but I can't stress that enough. Each consulate does have some variations and some of the details of what they expect and what they require and what they want you to do in the application process. So you need to make sure that you are following the guidelines for your consulate. Now, when we are going through and filling out the visa application form, that's going to be the same for everybody. Okay, so you can safely watch the first part of this video without having to wonder if your consulate is going to expect something different. The visa application form is the same for everybody. And the guidelines for filling that out that NowCat provides are provided to everybody. That will be standard across the board. But as far as what specifically you have to send to the consulate or bring to the consulate, in the application process, the other documents, there are some minor variations. For example, some consulates want two passport photos, some just want one. So it's nothing super major, but you simply need to be making sure that you are reading through the guidelines for your consulate. Here is Houston's guidelines, and you will see here at the top, at number one right here, it says the National Visa Application Form. When we click that, it, it's a link. When we click that, it's going to open up the visa application form. Each of the consulates on their guidelines and instructions page is going to have a link for you to click on to get to the visa application form. So when I click on it, this is what the visa application form looks like, and it's going to look standard across the board. Now, the only thing that is not standard here is that the Boston consulate, and as of today, only the Boston consulate, when you click on the link, brings you to the application form, but you fill it out online. So the Boston consulate has the PDF where you can type in your information and then print it out. And they say specifically on there that the Boston consulate expects you to type it out beforehand. They don't want you doing it by hand. All of the other consulates, they just give you the PDF, but it doesn't let you enter anything in. So you have to print it out and then fill it out by hand. So how do we know what we need to fill in here? Because there's a lot of things on here that don't seem to pertain to us. And this is where NALCAP has been helpful and provided us with a walk through for how to do this, okay? So here is the PDF that NowCat provides for walking through this process. It gives some information about the visa process in general, but we want specifically to get to filling out the visa application because the rest of it's all general and it's all things that you're going to find on your consulate's webpage. So pretty much everything on this PDF except for the going through the visa application is is superfluous. It's, it's not really that helpful. I'm going to walk through this with you here on screen, but if you want to know how to get 
to this PDF yourself. If you go to the NALCAP page on the applying for visa over on the left column and you scroll down, you're going to see right here where it says how to apply for a visa guidelines for US citizens. That's a link and that's where it will take you to this PDF, okay? So when we scroll down, it says right here, the step four, submitting your visa application paperwork. And then under that, it says helpful tips, filling out the application for national visa form, page 11. So we want to go down to page 11. Here is, by the way, the little map for the consulates in the region. So that, that is helpful here. So page 11, when we scroll down, and here we are. Okay, helpful tips are filling out the application for national visa form. And this is going to correspond directly to the things on the visa. So for example, right here, it says number one, apellido, and then over on the right, it tells you what you need to put in, last name, okay? So when we go back to the visa application form right here, it says number one, last name. Now, most of these applications, I think, all of them, all of the con links from the consulates, uh, when you go to the application, you will see that for under each number, it has it in Spanish and then it has uh, it in English as well. So that is nice. However, there are still quite a few things on this application that we don't actually need to fill out and don't apply to us. And that's what this walkthrough is going to do for us. I'm going to arrange the screen so that we have the walkthrough on the left and the application on the right, and then we're going to walk through this entire application process together. All right, so we have the guideline over on the left and the application over on the right now, and I have made myself a little bit smaller on the screen just to make sure that you guys have maximum visibility. Let's go through this step by step. The first thing over on the guideline at the very top where under where it says helpful tips is it has some red wording where it says very important. Keep in mind that the date format in Europe is day, month, year or two digits for the day dash two digits for the month dash or slash four digits for the year. Why is this so important? Because in the United States, if I were to pick a date, let's say December 13th, uh, 2023, if I were to write that with just numbers, I would say 12, 13, excuse me, 2023. All right. But for Europeans, and basically, as far as I know, for all Spanish-speaking countries, even in the Americas, South America, Central America, the day comes first, okay? So in this case, it would be 13, the day, then 12, because that's the month, and then the year, okay? Or, you know, of course, in this case, if we put... Uh, forward slashes instead and of course if it's a single digit on the month or the day then it would be a zero first and then the the numeral but that is how you would write this for Europe and it's how you would write it for you know somewhere in South America but we're going to Spain so this is important to keep in mind so if this is asking for the format of a date Whenever we uh, need to put a date in on this application, we need to be doing it with this format, with the day first and then the month, okay? So we just need to keep that in mind as we're moving forward and going through this process. So let's get to number one. Number one, apellido, that is last name. So over here on the form, you're going to write in or type if you're the Boston consulate, you're going to write in on your printed out copy your last name, okay? Number two, previous last names. If you are a girl and have gotten married and changed your last name or changed your last name for whatever reason, okay, you will put that previous last name in number two. Number three, first name, put in your first name. Number four, date of birth. And you will notice here, even on the application, that it says day, month, year for the format. 
Now it's not always going to say that on the application moving forward, but here it does. So for here, you're going to put in your date of birth with the day first, month second, then year. So if you were born on the 25th of February in 1990, then you would put 25 02 1990 okay with slashes or dashes in between number five over on the list and this is literally just what you need to do we just need to go straight down this list over on the left and anything that's not included we don't do it number five place of birth with the city and the state right here you're going to put the city and state. So if you were born in Detroit, then you put Detroit, comma, Michigan. Number six, in the same box, a country of birth, put USA, or you can write out United States. Number seven, nationality, USA, put it in there. This is, of course, assuming that you are a United States citizen. If you're not, then you will need to put something else. All right? Number eight, sex, male or female. Number nine, marital status. You're going to go over here under number nine and you are going to check mark the one that applies to you. You single, married, registered union, separated, divorced, widowed, uh, or something else. Number 10, minors. The form says don't fill it out. So just leave it blank. We're just going to keep moving forward. Number 11 uh, says only if Spanish citizen. If not, leave blank. So just leave it blank. Number 12, type of document, okay? We're going to have passport ordinary, ordinary passport, okay? So when we scroll down here on this, and of course you should have this printed out as you're writing on it, so you'll flip the page, but on the PDF we just scroll down. Number 12, we're going to click, or excuse me, we're not gonna click, we're going to check mark the very first one ordinary passport okay number 13 we're going to write in our passport number all right number 14 the issue date of our passport this is where the date comes in mind remember it is day first and then month okay number 13 passport number number 14 the issue date of our passport. Now remember, it's day first, then month, then year, okay? 15, the date at which it expires, the valid until date. Number 16, you're going to write U.S. Dept. period of state, United States Department of State. That is what you're going to put in there, just literally word for word, U.S. D.E.P.T. period of state. Number 17, Postal address, email address, and phone number. This is going to be your home information. Okay, You're going to write out your address of where you live. You're going to put in your email address below it. And then in the box to the right, it's still part of 17 where it says telephone number. You're going to put in your phone number. Number 18 says leave blank. Number 19 it says current profession. Whatever you do currently. If you don't have a job, just write unemployed. Number 20, we're going to check is studios or studies. It's in the right column over here, and it's right here, if you're looking where I just highlighted on the application. That's the one that you're going to check there. Number 21, the date you plan on arriving in Spain. Okay, so whenever you plan on getting to Spain, whatever your plan is right now as you're filling this out, pick a day at which you want to arrive and then that's what you're going to put personally i will i'm planning to arrive a few weeks early to look for an apartment get over jet lag and just get accustomed to the environment so i picked a date in september in which i plan on getting there and i wrote that in there keep in mind again we're using the day month year format for the dates okay number 22 we want to check multiple entries, okay? It's the third option. We want to check mark that for multiple entries. This is, you know, if we're going across the border and they're letting us in. Now, 
I believe on the Boston consulate, on their application, when you fill this out, it says more than three rather than multiple. Same thing, okay? It's the third one. We don't want the first one where it just says one entry. That means they're only going to let you enter one time. And we don't want two entries because if you have to leave Spain and then come back in, uh, we don't want to use up our, our entries. We want multiple entries, okay? Number 23, this is going to be the address of the school or the regional education office. What you're going to put for number 23 is you're going to put the address that is on your, your carta, your letter of acceptance from your school. So you're going to need that letter to fill out this form because you need to put the address that is listed there under number 23. Numbers 24 through 27. The guide says to leave blank, so we're just going to keep moving down until we get to number 28. All right, number 28. Uh, this is our contact info for the school or the regional office of education. So this also is where you're going to have to have your acceptance letter because it's going to have all of that information. You're going to put the name of the school here in this first little box at the top. And then we're going to have the address in the box just below that to the left, all right, where I have highlighted on the PDF. We're going to put the address of the school, the, the one that's listed on the letter, okay? So the same address that we put just a moment ago. The telephone number that is listed on your letter of acceptance. Now, interesting thing happened. On my letter, there was no telephone. There was a spot for it, but there was just a dash. There was no telephone listed. So in cases like that, what you can do, if there's a piece of information that you don't have, then you can probably find it on the internet. Uh, I had actually already looked up my school on the internet and I found the telephone number and I had also reached out and contacted the school in email and they responded and the little uh, identification at the bottom of the email whatever you call it the signature line had the telephone listed as well so I was able to get it so don't stress if you don't immediately see something on your carta you can probably find it online all right we need the email that is listed on the carta and we're going to put that in here as well in the box below the telephone number okay we need the intended starting date for number 28 here of the of the program and that is October 1st 2023 okay so you're going to put that here in this box and then it says the date of end of the program for here over on the right in this box and the guide tells us June 30th 2024 okay unless your carta says something different okay so you're, you're going to your carta is going to take uh, priority over this guide so if your carta says something different and, and I think this has to do with the fact that for example in Madrid the school year I believe goes through June but in the, some of the other regions it doesn't it only goes through May so there is that difference. So refer to your carta for that. Number 29, it says leave blank. Numbers 30 through 31, we are going to have the place and date of where we are filling out right now. And we're going to have our signature on 31. Okay. So that is the entire application. If there's something that says leave blank, leave it blank okay just do simply what it tells you follow your acceptance letter and use that to fill out the form and you should be just fine so now let's move to all of the different things that you're going to need for the visa so here we are back at the expectations for the houston consulate for applying for the visa now, one thing to note here is that the Houston consulate has you mail everything in. Some of the other consulates require you to make an appointment and go in person. So you will need to do whichever of those your consulate requires. I 
consider myself very fortunate that I don't have to go in person because I don't live anywhere near Houston. I simply had to mail everything in. So let's quickly go through everything that you need because whether you're mailing it in or you're going in person, you need to have all these documents ready, squared away and on hand. And you need to know that you have everything you need before you go or before you mail it in. Okay, so number one, national visa application form. We just went through that, filled that out, boom, done, awesome. Number two, passport, okay? I have not said anything about the passport in any of my videos up to this point simply because I thought that it was a given. I thought it was understood. You, you're going to need a passport for this. I maybe should have said something, but I am assuming that all of you that have gotten to this point in the process have a passport. And I believe you have to have a passport in order to sign into Profex in the first place because it's, it's your passport number. So you got to have your passport. All right. Number three, ID. It says proof of residency in one of the states. Now, again, remember, this is everything for the Houston consulate. Okay, so this is what Houston requires. You need to be following through whatever your consulate requires. I'm just simply walking you through what Houston requires as an example. Okay, there could be some discrepancies here. If, if you watch this and then go and look at your consulate's requirements, there may be some different things. I just, I just wanted to say that one more time right here in the middle. So, number three, Houston requires you to have a proof of residency in one of the states under our jurisdiction. Now, it does not require you to actually mail in your physical ID. That would be problematic because you wouldn't be able to drive anywhere. It says simply right here, send a photocopy of your driver's license, U.S. state ID, or student ID. You don't have to send the original, okay? So, we want to photocopy, scan in, print out, whatever our driver's license or whatever form of identification you have that identifies you as in one of these states under the Houston consulate's jurisdiction. Number four, Houston asks for two recent passport sized photos, white background, two by two, et cetera, et cetera. You can go to CVS or your local pharmacy and they can take these photos for you. It's super cheap, couple dollars to pay for it, done in five minutes. Okay, so make sure that you have those. Number five, acceptance letter by the regional education authorities. This is your carta. You need to print it out and you need to put it in your envelope that you're mailing or take it with you to the appointment. Number six, visa fee. The visa fee is $160. You need to go to wherever near you that does money orders and get a money order for $160. Fill it out correctly. You need to make it out to the consulate of Spain, in this case, in Houston, and then have that ready to go. Number seven, uh, this is, again, very specific to Houston, self-addressed prepaid envelope with a tracking number. All right, this is how you are going to mail it to Houston, to the consulate. Now, something very important that is not mentioned here about Houston and you may want to check this if you're mailing things in to another consulate you may want to check this as well houston has on their consulates webpage under the news that last year 2022 they stopped accepting carriers other than the united states postal service so even though this process is going to be very similar to what we did mailing to washington dc for the apostille and all of that, you're going to have to use USPS for the consulate. You cannot use FedEx. You cannot use UPS. You cannot use other carriers. They are only accepting United States Postal Service. So go to the USPS website, click and ship. Go through the same process we went through with UPS for getting the apostille. Fill out the information. Print out the label. Slap it on there. And then you're ready to go. Okay. So you'll need two, again, one to send it to Houston and then one to put inside so they can send it back to you. Which brings us to number eight, which is the postal delivery authorization, okay? And what this is, is I'll just show you the page and I think it's the same for all of the consulates that, that do mailing. What this does is this gives them your permission to mail everything back to you in the mail, which is important because you're mailing everything to them, all right? Number nine, now this is important. We're only gonna to go to number 10, okay? We have to do nine and 10 because 
our stay is going to be more than 180 days. We're going to be there for, you know, eight or nine months. So number nine, background check. That is the FBI background check that we've gone through. I've talked about in the previous videos. And it says here that background checks in apostilles must be translated into Spanish by a certified translator. Talking about the translation that was in the previous video, so by now hopefully you have your background check, you have it apostilled, and you have both the background check and the apostille translated. Number 10, final thing, medical certificate. All right, you have to have basically a doctor's statement not older than three months that you don't have any crazy diseases like Ebola or anything like that. So here's a link, if we click on it for Houston, it takes us to this page, and it has a place where the doctor can put our name in and then it says we're healthy and all these things and at the bottom has it in spanish and they'll need to fill that out as well it says that you'll have to have them stamp it all of these things and at the very bottom it says this certificate must be printed on the clinic's or doctor's letterhead. So it needs to be official. It needs to be on the, the clinic or doctor's letterhead. It needs to have their stamp. It needs to have their signature. It needs to have all of that. Now, the medical certificate that some of the other consulates use looks a little bit different, but it's the same idea. Okay, It's the same idea, same basic expectation. It just looks a little different. We don't have to do past 10 because 11, 12, thir basically 11 through 18 all has to do with if your husband or wife is coming with you and they're not doing the program. Because if they're doing the program, then they'll be doing all of these things themselves, 1 through 10. This is just if you're married and going and your spouse is coming and just kind of tagging along. And that's not the case for me, so I'm not going to go over that. Same thing under here, 19 through 26, minors. Basically, if you got kids, you're bringing kids. I doubt that anybody's probably going to be doing that, so we're not going to go through that. Back down here, there's just some notifications. Be advised that additional requirements might be requested. If something gets to the consulate and they say, hey, we need something else, then they will let you know. But if you follow step by step, that shouldn't happen. And then also applicants should not purchase their plane tickets until their visas have been granted. Okay, so don't, don't buy your plane tickets until you have your visa because you don't have your visa, you, you can't go. All right, and, and you don't want to you know, lose the money on a plane ticket that you can't take the plane. Okay, this is everything. Now, again, I will say one final time. If you are not with the Houston consulate, then your expectations might be a little bit different than this. I simply went through this because I'm going through the Houston consulate and this is just an example for you of going through everything and just getting you thinking about the things that you need. And if you are in a Houston consulate, then you can use this video as a checklist, go through the things, make a stack as I've just gone through it. You can rewind it and do that. But make sure that if you are with the Boston Consulate, then you're reading through the Boston Consulate's expectations. If you're with the LA Consulate, it's you're reading through LA's expectations. Again, this is just meant to be a guide in general, going through the process to help people that like videos and like visualization and want to see somebody else go through the process, which is like myself. It's, it's a lot easier to have someone explain it and listen to them and see them than it is to just read it on a page, especially when sometimes the page can be a little bit vague. If you have any questions, even if it's about what Boston expects or what LA or, or DC or wherever, even if it's not the Houston consulate, feel free to leave your questions below. I don't mind looking at the other consulates pages and, and trying to help people get through the process. I will try to help as much as I can. Of course, I do want to throw out the disclaimer that if something goes wrong, it's at the end of the day, it is your responsibility to make sure that you get it right. But if you, if you want a second set of eyes and opinion, feel free to leave it in the comments and, and I will try to help as best I can. From here, we've gone through both the visa application form and now the total requirements and documentation that is needed for the Houston consulate specifically. So we will go ahead and close out the video from here. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope as with the rest of these videos that it has been helpful for you. We are so close to having that visa in hand and ready to buy our tickets and get over to Spain. 
There's still going to be a lot of things that we will need to do once we get to Spain, such as getting a bank account, getting our TIE identification card, doing all those sorts of things. For me, I'll be in Madrid, so there will be things like getting our abono or, or our pass on public transportation for the subways, as well as other things such as finding apartments and things like that. And these are all things that I'm hoping to post videos about if I am able once we get to Spain. So this is, of course, by no means the end of this NALCAP series on this channel. There will be plenty more to come. Plan to do videos on travel and travel recommendations on where I go and things to see and, and what all I took and what was needed. So there is much more planned for this channel. So stay tuned for all of that. But for now, this is the end of the visa process and it is a sigh of relief or it will be a sigh of relief once we get those visas in hand and get ready to buy our plane tickets. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time. Peace.